So now we're recording. So welcome to this uh, quick winter professional development uh, virtual, obviously, opportunity from UNCG Libraries on flexible online research tutorials, help your students with research asynchronously. My name is Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian here at UNCG Libraries. I'm also the liaison to kinesiology, community and therapeutic recreation, and public health education. Um, so I'm going to be talking about liaison areas um, throughout. Um, but um, And if you would like, you're welcome to put your areas that you're coming from um, at UNCG in the chat. And then that way I can um, kind of specifically throughout the webinar webcast uh, mention your areas and your liaisons and make sure you're in contact with them about these new tutorials. Uh, so welcome. So my pronouns are she, her, hers as well um, after that introduction. So great, psychology, yes, hello. We've been in meetings together. Kind of opening chat. University libraries. Oh, hey, Anna. <laughs> I didn't even see you. Um, so here you go. Okay, so um, this is the presentation link. Um, and let me um, drop it into the chat. So if you're the kind of person that likes to um, follow along, um, here we are. Um, and this has a lot of the links I'm talking about, which mainly are the links to the tutorials, which we are going to tour. And I'll um, drop the links to the tutorials in the um, chat uh, as well once we kind of get to that. But just to kind of like give a behind the scenes getting started, why did we switch to this platform? Um, some of you might be aware that we had the research tutorials in a platform called PATH. But like all things, um, PATH started to get outdated. Um, a lot of them were uh, videos of students talking through research stuff, um, which was great and it's always been popular. Um, but we needed a platform that we could easily edit, change things, right? Um, insert new videos, um, as well as match our student learning outcomes to our information and literacy outcomes. So a lot of y'all might know Jenny Dale, our information literacy coordinator, and um, we work closely with something called the ACRL information literacy framework, um, which goes into different frames to do with research and how we teach students about research in terms of librarians. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that, that link is in the presentation. But this happened, um, I think, around 2013. 14, maybe 15, uh, this change in the way we thought about how we teach information literacy it was a pretty big shift um, in kind of incorporating information literacy in terms of the library field. But out of that came a new set of student learning objectives from the library to make sure that we're hitting these information literacy uh, outcomes. So we have this rubric, and if you're interested in looking at it, it is uh, publicly available and the um, link is in the presentation. It's go.uncg.edu slash libslos. Um, but they're really divided into these five categories of find, evaluate, use, credit, create. Um, so as you're probably looking at this and thinking through this, you, you're thinking through right your classes, right, and how this might connect to your research. We also have it divided into goals, right? So for example, if you look at the evaluate goal, students will develop the habit of critically evaluating information and media sources in a variety of formats. Um, if you go down to credit, uh, which is one I use a lot in my teaching, students will value the intellectual property of information creators and use sources use sources ethically. So you can go through here and look at that. We also have it divided into um, outcomes per um, student category. So we have first year general education, disciplinary major level, and graduate level. Um, so for example, if you go to find, which of course we use a lot, if we're looking at these disciplinary major level outcomes, so again, maybe not the first year um, introduction classes, but again, kind of delving into their major, we're looking for students to be able to revise search strategy based on search results, and that students will identify appropriate discipline specific databases and resources for their information needs. So I just thought it would be useful for y'all as instructors as maybe graduate students to look through our process in terms of how we teach, how we make these tutorials, because all of our tutorials and all of our teaching connect to these. And when we do assessment in terms of how we did, right, or you know, to improve, uh, to get better, we use these uh, categories, these student learning objectives as well. 
So there they are if you want to uh, dive into them. So again, we really focus on these categories of find, evaluate, use, credit, create. And another thing I know, um, again, I've seen you all in these meetings, is that with the new MAC imp imp implementation, the general education change, uh, this is where we'll also kind of be focusing in terms of working with those courses as well. Um, and I am not an expert on that, but we can talk about that at the end if you want. So then we have beyond those categories, we have two categories within that of the getting started Started with research, right, which is really meant we didn't use the word undergraduate on purpose, right, because we work with a lot of graduate students who might be coming back after a long break, um, aren't used to kind of these kind of library databases the way they work now, library catalogs, um, so it could be for everyone, but it's kind of these foundation aspects of research. And then we have a advanced research, which has stuff that we really wouldn't recommend um, unless you're a graduate student or again, um, you've been in research for a long time, you uh, are doing these more advanced advanced research projects, like maybe our McNair scholars who are doing these like large research projects with a faculty advisor type thing. So um, within there, we have two categories too that are kind of confusing, but again, I find it helpful when I do these presentations to talk through, where we have tutorials, which are these find, evaluate, use, credit, create categories. Right, so again, these more like broad ideas. And then they're made up of modules, these specific things about research that we want students, patrons to go through. Um, so for example, in the um, credit tutorial, we have modules on plagiarism, citation, and then specific cite integrating sources within your writing, and then specific citation styles. So far we have APA and MLA. Um, and more are coming. So um, there's opening, this is confusing. So on the website, we have a whole paragraph about it as well as opening um, language in every module to explain that they're within a module within a larger tutorial. So um, each one has two to four student learning objectives, right, for, per module. Um, and then each of these does have on the website platform a um, certificate generator for tutorials. So you have to do all the modules within the tutorials to create a certificate, if that's what you want. They're also available in Canvas Commons, where you can pull down each module from the website as a module within Canvas. They come with graded quizzes by default, but you can go into Canvas, work with your ITC or your library liaison and change the, you can eliminate the quiz, you can change the quiz to for credit only, not for a grade, um, all kinds of things can be done with that quiz, but they match the quizzes, they are a completely the same content within the website platform. Another positive thing about the Canvas Commons ones is that once you pull them down, from Canvas Commons, which I'll show you where Canvas Commons is and how to do that, you can edit them. So let's say you're in psychology, right, and you want to get the one on finding uh, on library databases, but you want to make it more specific to psychology databases, such as PsychInfo, maybe PubMed, you want to talk about clinical trials within that, whatever um, you like you can add that content or you can work with your librarian, which for psychology is Rachel Olson, and you can make it more subject specific. So it's completely editable for your needs, for your student learning outcomes for your course. Um, so we have so far, and I'm gonna talk about assessment a little bit um, in a little bit, but so far we have found that they are heavily used in Canvas Commons and that people really like the Canvas Commons option because of the editability. <laughs> I don't think that's a word. Um, so each of these has a uh, quick check option within the module. So each page of a module that has content ends with something we call a quick check, which we use a um, open source um, free tool called H5P that creates multiple choice, true or false, fill in the blank, drag and drop, um, kind of questions about the content within the modules. These are not graded, and we explain that at the beginning of each module. They are just interactions, or again, quick checks, right, to make sure students are paying attention throughout. Um, so that is what, we, again, I get this question a lot. What are you using to make these little quick checks? It's a free open source tool called H5P. If y'all have questions about that, I can talk about it, but I would also recommend talking to your ITC, and if you don't know who that is, I can um, direct you to the appropriate person. 
So um, here's how they look at Canvas Commons, which like I said, are I think where they're um, kind of being used a lot. Um, so each one, so here's the website platform on the right uh, where you can see kind of the trail, right? Tutorial home, plagiarism, they all have an introduction, they have a link to the help page, they have the learning objectives and you go through page by page by clicking the next button. And we'll go through this, I'll, I'll go through this um, on the web page there. But here's how the Canvas Commons looks right it's a module in the same way is that there's a page for each page in the website module and it duplicates the content completely we don't change anything in the canvas commons version so you can see here all the things that are included in this plagiarism module what is plagiarism types of plagiarism why should you cite we connect back to the site modules as well when to cite and vocabulary and then plagiarism at uncg so we link to like the academic integrity office and things of that nature um, we also, on each of the Canvas Commons modules, do have a feedback form um, where students can give us feedback and assessment, and that's what I'm going to show you all in a little bit um, on how we're doing, and that is mean that we currently have over 900 students filling out this form and telling us what they like and don't like about these tutorials, so we can get better. So if you go into Canvas Commons, which we'll do in a second, all you need to do to find this full list of tutorials is go into UNC, just type in UNCG libraries and they'll all pop up. Um, so you could then pull them down and use them in Canvas however you want. Uh, you just need to then import. Um, Canvas Common didn't used to have this feature, but now you can preview the content and make sure it is what you think it is, right, about plagiarism or whatever you're um, bringing down. And then, uh, again, you can then edit away. Um, so um, I can talk about some of the analytics from that. On the website platform, we have recently in, in the last semester added a link to a Google Doc that takes you to direct links of each of the Canvas Commons modules, as long as you are logged into your UNCG Canvas platform. Um, other than that, it, it would just take you to a screen that would be like, I don't know what you want. Okay, so before I kind of again delve into a tour of all this, I wanted to talk about how we feel we're doing, how we think it's going so far. So we did a soft launch of these in January of uh, 2020. We're in a different world now. <laughs> uh, but what we did is we, through the library liaisons, we kind of told faculty about these. We said, hey, we're trying out this new platform. Um, if you want to use these in your course, they're available. And we have this form on here for students to tell us how um, we're doing, which ones are used the most, that kind of thing. So based on those analytics and based on feedback from faculty who are like trying them out, um, we then um, added more <laughs> over the summer and at the beginning of the fall. So for example, we did not have specific citation style modules on there and now we do. Um, over this semester, we've added a couple as well. So another example is that um, we had to eliminate a database that we had called um, Opposing Viewpoints, where it was heavily used in our kind of CST 105 uh, first year courses where there was some kind of argumentative essay. Um, so to kind of deal with this issue, we made a module called Exploring Multiple Points of View, where we talked about all the different databases we have that provided the same service. Um, and again, we were able to make it within about two days right and get it out there and get it published on the platform because it's a very flexible easy to use platform on our end as well so here's how we're doing these are the canvas commons downloads as of november 2020 um, and one thing to keep in mind about canvas commons is that this is a download into a course so we don't know how many students are in that course right so like maybe one of these was downloaded into a large lecture bio class that's being used by 100 to 200 students we don't know that data from Canvas. We can look at website analytics, of course, by click. And I will say these numbers right here do match up to our website analytics and that these are our most used modules. So just like PATH, our most used module is plagiarism. Um, plagiarism um, has to be taken with any academic integrity violation at UNCG, or we do strongly recommend it for any academic integrity violation. Um, and of course, plagiarism is important, right? Um, especially in this transition to online that many of us had to go through. Um, so it is always, and I think always will be our most used research tutorial. Um, but the second one, there are ones after that that are heavily used. One of them is navigating the library website where we take you step-by-step step through the library website and how to get to the different services 
services and what we offer. Um, we recommend this, especially in orientations, whether you're an undergraduate or a graduate student, because it kind of just familiarizes yourself with this ideally resource that you're using all the time to do your research. Um, another popular one is popular and scholarly resources and citation. <coughs> which of course kind of connects back to plagiarism, right? Why do we cite? Why is citing important? And it links back to integrating um, sources as well, which again, integrating sources when you're writing, which is really in-text citation, was added at the beginning of fall. Um, so it's not as heavily used yet, but I, I believe it will get up there. Um, so again, here are just some other ones that you can see as well um, in terms of what we offer as well as the kind of what's being used. So library databases is up there, big picture research, um, anatomy of a scholarly article, um, picking and developing a topic, evaluating sources, again, stuff that y'all all are familiar with in your teaching. So that Google form I mentioned that we really have embedded, um, this was, this screenshot was taken in I think like mid November, late November uh, 2020. So I maybe more people have even filled it out since then. Uh, but at the time we had like over 900, oh here, we had about 900 responses then. Um, so you can see here, um, we did add in a question um, once we kind of realized, I think it's being really heavily used in Canvas Commons. We added in a question, um, did you take the tutorial in Canvas or the library's website? Um, and as you can see from our initial data of 124 responses, um, most of them are taking it in Canvas uh, right now. Um, and that might mean they're filling out the form more in Canvas. Um, there's not really like a way for us to know for sure. Um, but again, it's good to know that Canvas is a good option for your students. Um, and then we did ask them this question of this module met my needs. Um, and I'm pretty happy with this in terms of anonymous assessment from students, um, whereas a majority are saying, yes, five, five, it's a Likert scale with five being, um, yep, I'm totally satisfied. Um, so most are in that category. As you can see, then the next highest category is four, which again is still great, um, and then three, and then only a couple unsatisfied um, people. So I'm pretty happy with that in terms of anonymous feedback. Um, but just be aware that as um, faculty instructors, um, TAs, you're welcome to email your library liaison. And if you don't know who that is, I really would love to tell you who it is. Um, but um, to your feedback as well. We, we love the faculty level feedback. Um, most of the people on this form, as faculty, you can fill out this form. There's an option of I'm a student or a faculty. In terms of the 900 respondents, like I think at this time, like 840 you know, 60 or 70 were students. Mostly students are filling this out. Um, so if you have feedback about these tutorials, I would contact your liaison and then work with them. And then keep in mind too, that these are editable within Canvas Commons. So if there is something that you're like, oh, I would have done this differently, I respect that. And um, you can totally take it in and do it differently uh, with these Canvas Commons options. So now that we've uh, kind of talked about the process, I'm gonna go into the actual tutorials. So here they are, and I'll drop the link in the chat if you want to um, follow along with me. It, uh, here they are, and I'm like, you know, because I work with these so much, these are like my baby that I made, um, as well as it's a collaborative workflow. I did not make all these modules. Um, all the library liaisons worked on these together. Um, so I made some of them, um, but um, keep in mind that they are, it's a very collaborative workflow that uh, works really well. Um, so I don't know if we have anyone from nursing here. We did, um, you know, we worked with ARID, our electronic resources and IT department in the libraries to build this platform, to um, make this platform, which is unique to the library. And I'm just mentioning nursing because they had a grant from I think NCHS, NCHHS, um, where um, they built a suite of nursing tutorials with the same platform for professional development. Like, you know, they paid the library in terms of time for labor and uh, support, right, for the IT process, the server space that takes this. Um, but they made their own suite um, using this kind of similar platform, right? But it was professional development for nurses out in the field. Uh, so keep that in mind if that's something that interests you. That could be a um, grant that you work on or a project you work on with our ARIT department. 
But here are the categories that I have been talking about, right? So we have find, evaluate, use, credit, create. But notice we did create a separate tutorial on plagiarism because again, this certificate generation process comes from a tutorial. So we figured that a lot of people would probably want a certificate about just plagiarism and citations together since they're so intertwined um, to prove that they did it uh, you know, through the web platform and not Canvas um, for again, maybe an academic integrity violation. Um, but note, um, we just recently, like in the last couple weeks, added in one on annotated bibliography and lit reviews. Um, so they're all the time happening all the time. And then this semester, I run open educational resources, uh, which is this idea of eliminating textbooks using these open um, educational materials instead of a textbook. Um, I work with our student success librarian, Melody Rood, and we're creating this suite of open educational um, resources, OER um, modules as well on finding the materials, creating the materials, and teaching with the materials. And the teaching one does include a social justice EDI component um, of it as well, um, if that's something that interests you. But again, these are our more advanced ones. And then some other advanced ones that are on the horizon that we're at li liaisons are working on are scholarly communications, thinking about what is a quality journal, thinking through open access publishing, um, things like that, as well as data. Data, um, data literacy, data visualization, again, um, working with data, citing data, evaluating data, finding data, managing your data, all the data. Um, so um, that is another one that's on the horizon. These advanced ones are typically a little bit longer, um, but they work in the same idea. But for the these getting started on research ones, we try to, we keep them on a pretty strict template, right? Around 300 words-ish per page, these uh, one image, one video, um, these quick checks, and then it ends in these quizzes. So um, just to roll into one, um, library databases is one of our popular ones. So they all have these introduction ones, they link back up to help, and they also tell you the time that it takes to complete the module. We had a set of um, library and information science uh, grad students go through these and check um, for clarity to make sure they made sense, you know, because we're librarians, we think about this stuff all the time. Um, and then they um, also told us how long it took them to take the um, whole module. So if you go into the library database ones, um, you can see we embed things, right? So we have this presentation on library databases. We have information. And here are these quick checks that I was talking about where we ask um, you or your students questions throughout. So here's an example. Um, library databases can help narrow down your searching better than Google. It's true. And then it just says, yep, you got it right. Good job. So we don't track any of this data. Again, these are just fun interactions to engage students, to engage patrons with the modules. So you click next and you continue on. So note that again, they have hyperlinks, we have images, we have a lots of different multimedia to go through what is a library database with students. Um, so again, another question, you can access, you can use library databases off campus. You can, um, I'm sure we all know that by now. Um, hopefully our students know that by now. And then again, note that it links back also to other tutorials, right? Like on keywords, on permalinks, right? These ways we get things. Here's a video about a basic finding articles and academic databases. The nice thing, nice thing about this platform is that we can use um, videos from all over the world and then just say where we got it from or link back out to them. Um, so here's again a checkpoint, right? UNCG libraries databases are more helpful than Google or Google Scholar because um, I don't know. I'm just gonna. I think I got it. Yeah. Right. So Google does do these things that databases don't. Uh, but here's some other stuff they do. So, so on and so on. Um, you keep going through it. We have a research process again that we might link back to a tutorial on, you know, catalogs and databases, the differences. Um, and then so on and so on. So they all end then with a quiz like this um, so that you can take and it gives you feedback. Your students or you um, can take these as many times as you want um, in order to get it. If you log in with your UNCG email address on the upper right, it does track your progress. Um, remember, it can track your progress and your students can send you a screenshot of how many modules they've done in different tutorials from the website. Um, but to get a certificate, you do have to complete the entire tutorial of FIND. 
right, um, to get a certificate. But again, screenshots are an option for just if you wanted them to scatter them. Or again, the big one is Canvas Commons, which that's where I'm heading um, next. But they all work on this similar platform um, within the website one. Are there any questions as I go into Canvas Commons and uh, as we're heading towards the 30 minute mark? Again, I'm, I am very um, sensitive to everyone being very busy. So Canvas Commons is um, the repository for Canvas that you can access on your global Canvas navigation on the left. It's called Commons and it has this little arrow right here. So here you can search for anything. So let's say you wanted to search for a psychology one or an information literacy one, Anna in the libraries, metadata, things like that. Um, you can just type in your keyword here. But if you type in UNCG libraries, um, you will get access to every single thing, every single module we have on here. Um, I don't think in any kind of order that I can tell. Yeah, it's not alphabetical. It's just, it is what it is. So here we are, and then you can go into them. So let's say you wanted the citation one, you just click on it, um, and then it shows you all the stuff. You can preview it. So it shows you how it looks. You can go through it page by page and be like, yes, this is what I think it is. Um, the quick checks also work within Canvas. So again, these fun little interactions for your students. Hopefully they're fun, I don't know. Um, but um, you can still, it all works here. And then it ends in a quiz. So um, just to show you that, um, they're all kind of just graded by default, but um, trying to get straight to the quiz. Here they are. And so you can see the quiz. It's the same quiz that you'll see on the website platform. Um, and then, they'll, you know, you're the teacher importing this, right? So you see what questions are asked, which ones are right, and they're imported that way. Um, and that's how it goes. So that's the basic tour. Okay, that's it for me. Questions, concerns, comments. So as you all might be thinking of them and as I monitor the chat, I did have a slide here about like, oh, we can quickly add things in. So if there's something you don't see on the website platform that you think would be great for this, um, again, let your library liaison or me know, but here's some examples of things we've added, right, that I kind of mentioned throughout. But no, we also do make course specific ones liaison wise. So like, for example, our um, English 101 English librarian made um, a writing the college, you know, college writing module uh, that English 101 instructors, TAs can pull into courses and use um, and then adapt um, based on that. So that was kind of a conglomeration of a lot of different research modules that we put on each Canvas page. And then um, our CST 105 librarian, Rachel Olson, also made one for CST 105, which you know every pretty much every student at UNCG has to take. Um, so um, you can see that's also a heavily used one as well that we adapted. So yeah, people are saying, looks like it'll be very useful, great. Um, yeah, and then I mentioned this, but keep in mind, like, this isn't a done list. One of the reasons we moved this to this platform um, over um, PATH, which again, was just mostly getting outdated, is that um, we want to be able to add them, right, as things come up, as things change in research, as we learn more things, as links change, which, as you all know, as academics, um, happen all the time. So some things we have on the horizon are scholarly communications um, topics, which again, include things like open access publishing, uh, what is a quality journal, predatory journals, um, things of that nature. Primary sources where we're going to be working with our special collections and archives department, um, as well as our history liaison librarian, Maggie Murphy. Um, health science research, we have, of course, health science liaison teams where we'll be doing like evidence-based practice, um, health evaluation, health website evaluation, um, things like that and others. So if you can think of others that I haven't mentioned that are to do with research, um, then uh, let me know. So um, yeah, so someone mentioned English 102. Yeah, so this college writing one that I mentioned uh, also could be used for you, right? What we did in that one is that we 
um, brought in a lot of different um, tutorials that really matched uh, the English 101 like humanities kind of research paper assignments um, that Jenny Dale made this. And then we like combined them together with all the quizzes into one module. So you could look at that and see if it worked for you. And then we have MLA um, in there, you know, as the citation style, um, as well as, you know, very deep, which includes detailed stuff about um, MLA. Um, so just to show you how that looks a little different, it's long with the idea of that you would um, take it in and, um, sorry, I should say UNCG, there's a lot of, this also links to a, you know, a national network. So you have to say UNCG, uh, college writing, um, but you can see here how it looks different. It's long with the idea of that you will cut it down. Um, and then Ginny Dale has a note about how to use it, how she would recommend using it, and then all the quizzes. Um, but note, we kind of combined modules into pages. So instead of having a full module on evaluating sources, we moved it into a page, um, did some wrap text stuff, um, and kind of like moved things around in that way. But you could cut this down however you like. But the H5Ps work in here as well. All of them have the H5Ps. Okay, so yeah, and Anna um, Kraft, our coordinator of metadata services here, is saying um, they that uh, she's working on scholarly communication. She she uh, helps me at least with a lot of Scalcom stuff. Um, but again, remember to also contact your liaison librarian. I mean, I see some of my people in here, um, so hopefully I'll know to definitely just email me. Um, but something we can do right as liaisons is that I can be a librarian in Canvas, and I can pull down this Canvas Commons module, right? And we can work together on how it could adapt to your specific course, your specific needs. Again, maybe graduate students need more oomph, right? And some of these getting started with research ones, maybe they don't. Maybe like they want to start with the like literature review one, which we have in getting started, um, but then link to some more stuff. And again, the lit review one is hot off the presses. I published that yesterday. So y'all are getting like the first preview of that, if that interests you. I just see Pam Brown here and I know like I work with um, the kinesiology EDD students on their lit reviews. So um, yeah, great. So it is 11.31. I guess I slightly lied. We're a minute over. Any other final questions, comments, concerns before I um, close this out? We can go on with our December day. It actually looks kind of nice out. Well, thank you all for coming. And again, you'll get a uh, link to the recording of this that you're welcome to share with colleagues. Um, you know, anyone, we want people to see this and use this stuff. Um, and uh, we are still virtual in spring 2021. If you haven't yet received an email from your liaison librarian, you will. We're just, you know, like all people, right, in a pandemic, we tired. Um, so, but you will be hearing from us if you haven't yet. Um, heard from us and uh, we can still we are still offering all of the services we always offer as research outreach and instruction, uh, but they will continue to be virtual, which means we can offer synchronous information literacy sessions. Uh, these asynchronous options, as well as a lot of different canvas integrations, uh, we can be a library in your course, we can make announcements, we can um, uh, integrate our lib guides our research guides in your course as well. But that's it. So i'll let you all know. have a great Thursday. It's Thursday. Bye.